Hi everyone, it's Feelings Friday. Whenever I do feelings, I want to make my fingers do this. Also, I broke my pinky. I was playing football. Um, but this isn't about football. This is about writing. And um, I am in the middle of writing my second collection of poetry. And sometimes I get stuck and I want to get past writer's block. And uh, some good ways I find getting through it is uh, prompts and reading other poetry to inspire you. And then I start thinking in poetry and I look around and I'm like, this blanket is like a fuzzy cave. And then I'm, then the genius comes. Um, so as I'm exploring this, I thought, why not invite you guys to do it if any of you are writers or want to get better at writing or, you know, want to even get into writing. Um, and a lot of what I do is spoken word, so for me the um, the aspect of speaking it is really important. So the videos I think are going to be a part of it. Um, so if you want to write or listen to poetry, this is what this is for. If you don't like those things, you should turn this off because that's mostly what's happening. But you should listen. It's going to be fun. Okay, um, the first poem we're going to do is uh, is called The Names They Gave Me. And this is one of my favorite poems I've just very recently found, and I've actually read it a million times now. I think it's a really interesting poem and um, true for a lot of people. Uh, all right. It's called The Names They Gave Me. One. Your name is Tezbih. Don't let them call you by anything else. My mother speaks to me in Arabic. The command sounds more forceful in her mother tongue, a Libyan dialect that is all sharp edges and hard, guttural sounds. I am seven years old, and it has never occurred to me to disobey my mother. Until twelve years old, I would believe God gave her the supernatural ability to tell when I'm lying. Don't let them give you an English nickname, my mother insists once again. I didn't raise American. My mother spits out this last word with venom. American. Americans. It sounds like a curse coming out of her mouth. Eight years in this country and she's still not convinced she lives here. She wears her headscarf tightly around her neck, wades across the school lawn in long, floor-skimming skirts. Eight years in this country and her tongue refuses to bend and soften for the English language. It embarrasses me, her heavy Arab tongue, wrapping itself so forcefully around the clumsy syllables of English, strangling them out of their meaning. But she is fierce and fearless. I have never heard her apologize to anyone. She will hold up long grocery lines, checking and double-checking the receipt in case they're trying to cheat us. My humiliation is heavy enough for the both of us. My English is not. Sometimes I step away so people don't know we're together, but my dark hair and skin betray me as a member of her tribe. On my first day of school, my mother presses a kiss to my cheek. Your name is Tazbih, she says again like I've forgotten. Tazbih. Roll call is the worst part of my day. After a long list of Britneys, Jonathans, Ashleys, and Yen, but call me Jens, the teacher rests on my name in silence. She squints. She has never seen this combination of letters strung in this order before. They are incomprehensible. What is this H doing at the end? Maybe it is a typo. Taz. Tazbe, I mutter with my hand half up in the air. Tazbe. A pause. Do you go by anything else? No, I say. Just Tazbe, Tazbe, Tazbe. All right, Alex. She moves on before I can correct her. She said it wrong. She said it so wrong. I have never heard my name said so ugly before, like it's a burden. Her face contorts as she says it, like she is expelling a distasteful thing from her mouth. She avoids saying it for the rest of the day, but she has already baptized me with this new name. It is the name everyone knows me by. Now, for the next six years, I am in elementary school. Taz B, a name with no grace, no meaning, no history. It belongs in no language. 
Taz B, says one of the students on the playground later. Like Tasmanian devil, everyone laughs. I laugh too. It is funny if you think about it. Three, I do not correct anyone for years. One day in third grade, a plane flies above our school. Your dad up there, Bin Laden? The voice comes from behind. It is dripping in derision. My name is Taz B, I say. I say it in this heavy English accent so he may know who I am. I am American. But when I turn around, they are gone. Four. I go to middle school far, far away. It is a 30-minute drive from our house. It's a beautiful set of buildings located a few blocks off the beach. I have never in my life seen so many blonde people, so many colored irises. This is a school full of Ashtons and Penelopes, Patricks and Sophias, beautiful names that belong to beautiful faces, the kind of names that promise a lifetime of social triumph. I am one of two head-scarved girls at this new school. We are assigned the same gym class. We are the only ones in sweatpants and long-sleeved undershirts. We are both dreading roll call. When the gym teacher pauses at my name, I am already red with humiliation. How do I say your name, she asks. Taz B, I say. Can I just call you Tess? I want to say yes. Call me Tess. But my mother will know somehow. She will see it written in my eyes. God will whisper it in her ear. Her disappointment will overwhelm me. No, I say, please call me Tasby. I don't hear her say it for the rest of the year. Five. My history teacher calls me Tashba for the entire year. It does not matter how often I correct her, she reverts to that misshapen sneeze of a word. It is the ugliest conglomeration of sounds I have ever heard. When my mother comes to parents' night, she corrects her angrily. Tazbih. Her name is Tazbih. My history teacher grimaces. I want the world to swallow me up. Six. My college professors don't even bother. I will only know them for a few months of the year. They smother my name in their mouths. It is a hindrance for their tongues. They hand me paper silently. One of them mumbles it unintelligibly whenever he calls on my hand. Another one just calls me T. My name is a burden. My name is a burden. My name is a burden. I am a burden. Seven. On the radio, I hear a story about a tribe in some remote rural place that has no name for the color blue. They do not know what the color blue is. It has no name, so it does not exist. It does not exist because it has no name. Eight. At the start of a new semester, I walk into a math class. My teacher is blonde and blue-eyed. I don't remember his name. When he comes to mind on the roll call, he takes the requisite pause. I hold my breath. How do I pronounce your name, he asks. I say, just call me Tess. Is that how it's pronounced? I say, no one's ever been able to pronounce it. That's probably because they didn't want to try, he said. What is your name? When I say my name, it feels like redemption. I have never said it this way before. Tez He repeats it back to me several times until he's got it. It is difficult for his American tongue. He has none of the strength, none of the force of my mother's, but he gets it. Eventually, and it sounds beautiful. I have never heard it sound so beautiful. I have never felt it so deserving of a name. My name feels like a crown. Nine. Thank you for my name, Mama. 10. When the barista asks me my name, Sharpie poised above the coffee cup, I tell him, My name is Tezbe. It is a tough T clinging to a soft A, which melts into a silky S, which loosely hugs the B, and the rest of my name is a hard whisper. Eh, Tezbe. My name is Tezbe. 
Hold it in your mouth until it becomes a prayer. My name is a valuable undertaking. My name requires your rapt attention. Say my name in one swift note as bear. And let the H heat your throat like cinnamon as bear. My name is an endeavor. My name is a song, tis bear. It means glory to God, tis bear. Wrap your tongue around my name, unravel it with the music of your voice, and give God what he is due. It makes me cry. I love this poem. It feels like an instruction manual of how to honor yourself, starting with your name, and I think... All of us need a reminder of how to honor ourselves. So this week's prompt is, do you like your name? Do you like it when other people say it? How does it roll off your tongue? Is there another name you've wanted to go by? Write a love letter to your name. Write a thank you letter to your name. Write an apology to your name. If you want to share your poem with me, send it to marylambertsing at gmail.com and I'll pick and post some of my favorites next week. Um, again, this is a beautiful poem. Um, her name is, of course, it's so funny because I'm like, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I've <laughs> spent like 15 minutes trying to figure out like, how do I say it? Um, but I think that's part of the joy of the poem too. Um, and I found this on uh, the toast, I think, from my friend Rachel McKibbins. Um, but it's a beautiful name called The Names They Gave Me. And I hope you like Feelings Friday. I already cried. So there you go. It worked. <laughs> Have a good week, you guys, and I'll talk to you next Friday. <laughs>